Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. The GMAT official guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You are going to need it. Today, we will solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 78. Turn to it, page number 78, make sure the book is in front of you, turn to page 78. After having watched this video, if you find it helpful, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at Kishwani Prep at iCloud.com. Let's begin, shall we? Numbers, number 103, without the book in front of you, it will be difficult for you to follow the work, because I do not, as I have told you several times in the past, put down everything that is in the, in the problem. I just put the summary of it. But let's first take care of the picture. There is a picture that is given to us. We're going to put down this picture as best as I can. And the picture looks something like this. We have a triangle here. And then we have another triangle. And then they cut, they cut it off here. And they cut it off here. Apparently it's a blueprint of a home. That's what the home looks like. And we are told that this is the bathroom, this is the living room, this is the kitchen. We are not interested in any of that. We are interested in the bedroom. Because the question is asking us the area of the bedroom. What's the area of the bedroom? They also tell us this is the south wall and the north wall of the bedrooms are parallel. These two lines are parallel. Let's see what we can do. They also give us some dimensions. They tell us that this distance from here to here is 30. This distance from here to here is 30. This distance from here to here is 15. This is 30 and this is 30. As you can see, we know just about everything about the bedroom, the dimensions of the three walls in the bedroom. What we don't know is this part. And we need to first figure out how long that distance is before we can figure out the area of the bedroom because we have to figure out the height and the base. Do you understand? Let's begin, shall we? There are two ways to go about it. There are two ways to go about it. One way is very straightforward. One way is because they tell us that this line, let's call it L1, and this line, let's call it L2, because they tell us that north wall, north wall is parallel to the south wall, let's put it, let's put it separately here. If we have a triangle, if you have a triangle, any triangle, doesn't matter, any triangle, and if you cut it in half, which, we, which is what we're doing here, this is 30 and this is 30, which means we're cutting this line in half, right here. If you cut it in half and draw a parallel line, then this distance and this distance is also cut in half. And that is, the, that is the fact, it's cut in half. And we are told that this distance is 15. Therefore, this distance must be 15. That's one way of doing it. That's a more straightforward way of doing it. Another way we could have figured it out, there's another way we could have figured it out. Let's, let's do it here, the second way, which is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to go a little bit faster here. Let's call this angle X. And because this line is parallel to this line, because these two lines are parallel, if this is angle X, this is also angle X. Let's call this angle Y. And because this is angle Y, and because they are parallel, this is also angle Y. And this third angle, angle Z, is shared by both of the triangles which means all of the three angles are equal to each other in both of the triangles, which means the top angle, the smaller angle, is similar to the bigger angle. If they are similar, which means the si which means the length are in proportion, which means the length are in proportion. If this is 60, and if, if this is 30, right here, if we're looking here, this part right here, if, 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 this, is, if this is 60 and it's cut in half, if it's cut, cut in half, which means if this is 15, this must be 15 because it's cut in half. Because we're cutting this thing in half, which means this side of the triangle must be 15 because the entire length was 30. So there are two ways we can go about it. So we are done. We know it's, like, we know it's 15. After we figure out that this length is 15, after we figure out this length is 15, what we notice is that 15 plus 15 is 30. This is 30 and this is 30. So essentially we're, looking, we're being asked to figure out an area of a very simple equilateral triangle. 30 by 30 by 30. 
let's do that, shall we? We don't need any of this now. I'm going to raise it. We're done with all of that. We're just going to simply draw a, an equilateral triangle. This is 30. This is 30. And this is 30. Let's find out the height, height of this triangle first. Once we have the height, we have the base, we can figure out the area very quickly. Let's call this edge. And this distance from here to here is going to be 15. So in this triangle, let's call it ABC. In this triangle ABC, H 30 squared, 30 squared is going to be equal to H squared plus 15 squared, which means H squared is equal to 900 minus 225. 900 minus 700, 900, 900 minus 200 would have been 700. It's not 200, it's 225. So instead of 700, it's going to be 675. And H is simply square root of that. Is it true so far? Let's see what we can do with 6, 675. If we divide the 675 by 3, and we know it is divisible by 3, because how do we know it's divisible by 3? Because 6 is divisible by 3, and 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. So we know 675 is divisible by 3. Let's do it. 6 has 2 3's, 7 has 2 3's, 2 3's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins 5 and becomes a 15, and 15 has 5 3's. There you go. So 675 essentially is simply 3 times 225. I hope you are with me so far. Very good. And you know the square root of 225 is just 15. 225 is a perfect square. So it turns out that the height is simply 15 times root 3 and we are done. And therefore the area that we are looking for is 1 half base which is 30 times height which is this. And so it becomes 15. 15 times 15 is 225, so it turns out that this area of the bedroom that we're looking for is simply 225 times root 3, and that's all there is. 104. Oh 104 says that we have a scale drawing. Let's erase all of this thing. It says that we have a scale drawing on a scaled drawing we are told that one inch represents 15 feet one inch represents 15 feet we are told and we are told that the room on this blueprint appears as one inch by one and one third inch one inch and one and one third inch we are told that we are being asked how many how many square tiles, the tiles are squares, square floor tiles are needed, floor tiles that are 6 inch, 6 inch by 6 inch obviously because it's square, 6 inch in length are needed to tile the floor, to tile the floor. How many square Square tiles do we need? And we are told the tile is 6 inch. Let's begin, shall we? First thing we need to do is figure out what this translates into actual dimensions. So let's do that here. 1 inch, 1 inch is just 15 feet. And 1 and 1 third, 1 third of 15, 1 third of 15 is 5. So it's 5 plus 15 is 20. So it turns out that our room is 15 by 20. And we're going to tile it with the, with the tiles that is 6 inches, it's a square tile, 6 inches by 6 inches, but because the dimension of the room is are in feet, we have to convert this into feet, which is very straightforward, it is simply half feet, half foot by half foot. So let's put that here, half foot by half foot, and there we go, that is our answer. Half times half is one quarter, so this whole thing, this whole thing simplifies to one quarter, if you bring it to the top, it simply becomes four, uh, four, and this bottom will disappear. Because the feet are going to cancel out, you see? Because it's the tiles. Tiles don't have, are not going to have units, it's just, just tiles, number of tiles. The feet are going to cancel out. One quarter times one quarter is one, one, one half times one half is one quarter, which goes on the top, and this half disappears. There you go, that's all we're done. 15 times 20, 15 times 15 times 10, I know, is 150, therefore 15 times 20 must be 300. 300 times 4 is 1200. 
So it looks like it looks like we're gonna need 1,200 tiles to do the job to tile the floor of this room that happens to be 15 feet by 20 feet. If we're gonna use tiles that are only half feet by half foot. Number 105. Five says that we have 200 people that are surveyed. We're going to survey 200 people, and when we did that, we found that 60 of them tell us that they ski, other 80 of them they tell us that they bike. The question is, what's the number? What's the number of people who? Who neither, let me put the neither here, who neither ski nor bike or other. It, they tell us the number of people who neither ski nor bike is two times, is two times the number of people who do both. Question is how many do neither? As you can clearly see, as you can clearly see, this question can very easily be done with, a, with the help of a Venn diagram. So let's do that, shall we? So here's our Venn diagram. Here is the number of people who ski, here is the number of people who bike, the ski and bike. We are told that 60 people ski. We are further told that 80 people bike. But obviously, of those 60 people who bike, of those 60 people who ski, some of them may also bike. And similarly, of the 80 people who bike, some of them may also ski. Let's call that X. X is the number of people who do both. And since we put x here, now the number of people who just ski is simply 60 minus x. And similarly, the number of people who only bike and do not ski is only 80 minus x. Let's read the rest here. It says, number of people who neither ski nor bike, number of people who neither ski nor bike is two times the number of people who do both. Number of people who do both is x. So the number of people who do neither is 2x. It's two times. The number of people who neither ski nor bike, which is this guy right here, is two times the number of people who do both. That's it, we are done. We have our equation. All we have to do is solve for it and it says how many people, how many people do neither. At the end we have to remember, we have to remind ourselves that when we solve for x, we have to remind ourselves to take two times the amount, because otherwise we'll have to find the number of people who do both. We're not interested in how many people do both. We're being asked how many people do neither. How many people do neither? Let's do it on the top. So now the equation is very straightforward. So 60 minus x are the people who only ski plus 80 minus x, number of people who only bike, plus the number of people who do both, plus the number of people who do both, plus the number of people who do neither. And all of that has to add up to 200. There we go, because we, asked, we surveyed 200 people and we asked them, do you ski? Do you bike? And we kept track of it. Some people said I only ski, some people say I only bike, some people say I do both, some people say no, I don't do either of those activities. Let's find out, shall we? So we have a positive x, I see, I, I see a negative x here and I see a positive x, let's cross it out. Let's keep track of things, okay? 60 plus 80, 60 plus 80 is going to be 140. And then we have a negative x here and a positive 2x. A negative x and positive x is just going to be x equals 200, therefore x equals 60, and therefore the number of people who do Number of people who engage in neither, either, the number of people who engage in neither of these activities is 120. Very simple, very straightforward. 100, that was 106, by the way. No, that was 105. 106.
106. In 106 we are told that uh, M we are told that uh, uh, these relationships that we're going to write, these relationships hold for some operation we don't know what that operation is, but whatever that operation is, is this symbol is being used to represent it. This symbol signifies that operation. It holds for some operation X, uh, some operation which is sign uh, presented with this uh, this symbol, and the quantities M, N, P, Q, and R. There we go. So M operation P equals N. N operation R equals M, N operation Q equals Q, P operation Q equals P, Q operation P equals R. And you will see in a second, you will see in a second that we are making a big fuss about nothing. There is much, much ado about nothing because the question that is being asked is very straightforward. Here is what is being asked. We have to find out this quantity, M operation P, operation Q, operation P. Let's find out very simple, very quickly, shall we? M operation P is right here the first one, and N operation P equals M. And then we have operation, and then Q in the parentheses, and N operation Q, N operation Q is right here, and that just equals Q and then operation P, here we have operation P and Q operation P, Q operation P is right here is simply R there you go so the answer is, answer simply is the final result is the quantity R we don't know what the operation is and we really don't care 107 107, just give me one, one brief second One hundred and seven. One hundred and seven says that we're going to rent something. We're going to rent an equipment. I don't know. I don't write down what it is. It doesn't matter what it is that we're renting. But whatever it is that we're renting, we're going to pay X dollars for the first twenty-four hours. Plus Y dollars for each additional hour. We have to pay X dollars for the first 24 hours, and after that, we have to pay Y dollars for each additional hour that we keep the equipment. The question simply is how much is the rent? How much is the rent for 36 hours? Very straightforward, very very simple. First, first 24 hours plus the next 12 hours will give us the 36 hours that we're looking for. This is supposed to be 36, not 30. 36 hours. So for the first 24 hours, we're simply going to pay X dollars. And after that, we pay Y dollars for each additional hour. Y dollars for each additional hour. We are renting it for another 12 hours, so it's simply going to be 12 times y. And that's all it is. Very simple as I said, very straightforward. 108. 108. Let's see what it says. Hundred and eight tells us. That the mass of one cubic centimeter equals 7.3 grams. We have something. What it is that we have really doesn't matter to us. But whatever it is, the volume of one cubic centimeter of that mass is the mass of that object that has a volume of one one cubic centimeter happens to be 7.3 gram. The question is, what's the mass going to be of one cubic meter. 
one cubic meter. Let's set it up, shall we? So we know we have cubic centimeter and we have grams and we are told that one cubic centimeter is 7.3 grams. And the question is, what's the mass of one cubic meter? This is what we're looking for. And it's one cubic meter and one cubic meter they tell us, it is given to us, they tell us that one cubic meter is 1 million. They tell us that 1 cubic meter is equal to 1 million cubic centimeter. This information was given to us. And that's all there is. Now keep in mind that when we finish, the x that we're going to find is going to be in, a, in grams. We're going to convert this, from, from, from this quantity from gram to kilogram in a second because the question was what's the mass of one cubic centimeter in kilogram? That was the question. Let's begin, shall we? So x is going to be, bring the x to the top and this quantity times this quantity, 7.3 times 10 to the 6. And that is the gram. And we know that because we want to convert it into, into kilogram, we know that one kilogram is 1,000 1, gram per kilogram. There are, there are 1,000 gram in one kilogram. As you can see, grams are going to cancel out and kilograms are going to end up on the top. This is a thousand, this is a million, divide top and bottom by 1,000, and this becomes 3. 7.3 times 1,000 is simply 7,300. 7,300 kilograms. There you go. And that's all there is. That's all there is. There's nothing to it. Before we go to the next question, before we go to the next question, I hope I hope that you were able to figure this out on your own. They give us this information. They give us this information, but this is not a big secret. This is something you should be able to figure out yourself. Very, si very simply, very easily. Let's draw a cube of one cubic meter. One cubic meter. Okay, and watch what happens. One, because it's a cube of one cubic meter, because it's a cube, all the, all the sides are one meter. Are you with me? One meter times one meter times one meter is going to give us one cubic meter. If you want to, if you want to express this into centimeters, it's very simple. One meter is one hundred centimeter. One hundred centimeter. One hundred centimeter. As you can see, hundred times hundred times hundred, two zeros, two zeros, two zeros, is six zeros. Six zeros is one million. Therefore, when you convert this one cubic meter into cubic centimeter, centimeter times centimeter is the same centimeter is going to give us cubic centimeter. And 100 times 100 times 100 is a million. And that's all there is. They give it to us, but they're, I don't know why they why they saw the necessity to give it to us. It's something we can figure out ourselves very easily. What I'm trying to make you understand is that this is not something I would memorize. I didn't, didn't I don't memorize it. If I need to do it, just figure it out. It only takes a few seconds. 109 is another very simple question. It says z plus 1 minus 2z squared over z equals w over z. And the question simply is, how much is w? How much is w? We have to solve for w. We have to solve for w. W is right there. If we can get rid of the z from the bottom, we are home free. Let's multiply the entire equation by z. If we multiply the entire equation by z, this is going to be times z. This is going to be times z. This is going to be times z. I don't know why I'm doing it out in a childish way. It's not necessary. And that z is going to drop out. And that's it. We're done. I don't know why I saw the need to do it in such childish manner. z times z is z squared plus 1 minus 2z squared plus 1 minus 2z squared equals w. There you go. z squared minus 2z squared is simply going to be 1 minus z squared equals w. Now when you look at the answer choices, for some strange reason, they thought it was cute to write this thing not as 1 minus z squared, but they thought it was going to be cute to write it as negative z squared plus 1. 
you and I both know that it's the same bloody thing. That was the end of the page. We're not going to start a new page. We're going to meet again tomorrow and we're going to pick up the data sufficiency problems from where we left off yesterday. If you want to get hold of me, as I said before, you can reach me at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.